Good evening, everybody. How are you on this quite mild Tuesday evening of Pancake Day? I hope you've all had your fill of pancakes and you're all ready and ready to go to paint this um, barn owl in flight. Um, I did post the, the colours with the reference images. Um, I've only drawn the owl or traced the owl. You can trace the owl if you've managed to print off the reference image. Um, which is under the topics section in this group under reference image and it'll be the first one that will show up and all of the colours are there but they're also along the top of the screen there they're burnt sienna, ultramarine, lemon yellow, cadmium red, white, black and a little bit of yellow ochre if you have it it doesn't matter if you don't we can make a similar version of it so good evening I'll give you about 15 minutes to um, to draw your owl. If you could say, I'm having trouble reading comments at the moment on Facebook, but if you could write drawn um, just so I know, that would be really, really helpful. Um, you can also see the colours on my plate almost just poking through. If I just lower the bar now a little bit, you can see their blacks just shying away a little. There he is on the screen. I hope you had a good weekend and I hope you're quite excited. I know we've got quite a few new people joining this evening, so welcome. It's lovely to have your company and I'll try and be gentle. Ooh. We're going to do quite a bit of blendy bits today, but nothing because um, the background's out of focus. So we want to create that sort of back out of focusy feel. Um, I'll try and explain everything as if you've never done acrylics before, because um, I don't know. Some of you might never have done acrylics before, or you might just fancy the subject. I don't know. Um, I'm sure you'll let me know. I've got four of you with me so far, that's lovely. So you've got until quarter past to sketch the owl if you haven't already, um, or trace it if you've printed off from the reference image, um, then uh, that might be your best bet if you're not really that confident in drawing. I've got a cup of tea by the side of me. I've got my paints ready. I have got my water that I've remembered. I can see that my microphone is working today, which is always helpful for you. Um, and I've got you, so that's that's all we need. I haven't done all of the markings on the owl. Um, I've just basically drawn where everything is. Because if you're familiar with acrylics, you know full well that uh, you end up painting over most of your lines. But um, we'll try not to do that too much today. I know we'll have a few people joining in. Um, retrospectively so if you are watching on catch up hello um, welcome nice to have you with me um, and enjoy the lesson so I had a disastrous morning with pancakes because I'm having to have gluten free and oat milk uh, because I've had to change my diet. Oh, I couldn't do it. T I made this sort of hybrid porridge slash uh, pastry thing. It just wouldn't. It wouldn't cook. It would either burn, and then leave me with this slop that I couldn't flip or anything. Um, but thankfully, I had a, a guardian angel come swoop in and do exactly the same thing, but actually get pancakes. So I'm grateful I had pancakes for breakfast eventually. So if you're new, are you 
excited? Are you scared? Are you nervous? Are you nervous sighted as I call it? Um, a bit of everything. Bit of nerves is good. So quarter past is when I'm going to pick me brushes up. Um, so you can see the colours along the top of the screen. If you haven't got those exact colours, I'll tell you some alternatives. Um, obviously, black and white are black and white. You can't really, it doesn't matter which black, whether it be Mars black, lamp black, um, ivory black, don't matter. Uh, white, titanium white's preferable. Cadmium red, or you could have cadmium red light, or you could have vermilion. Ultramarine, generally there isn't a replacement for ultramarine, sadly, but it's usually in every set. Lemon yellow or cadmium lemon, um, anything that's citrusy. You could have process yellow um, or cadmium yellow light at a push. Uh, yellow ochre or raw sienna will work. Um, or if you've got cadmium yellow, you can mix it with your brown. You don't necessarily need burnt sienna, you could use burnt umber or whichever brown you have. Oh, good evening, Sandra. Hello. Oh, I haven't finished yet. These back wings have gone a bit. No, they're a little bit darker. I can see them now. It's lovely to have you joining me. And of course I will be waffling on throughout the evening. And hopefully teaching you some art as well. It's what you're there for, isn't it? What did you have on your pancakes? I just went for the, the general sugar and lemon. I nearly had Nutella, but you know, I thought, no. I'll um I'll stick to the lemon and uh, lemon and sugar today. Oh, bird song! I haven't put any bird song on. I thought it was a little bit quiet, and I, I couldn't work out why. I know you all look forward to your relaxing um, bird song. Just to sort of give you a nice, calm environment. Although, I doubt there'll be that many birds singing with a big barn owl swooping in. Um, it's probably hiding. So if you need to see a close-up of the reference image, there we are. So it's quite a light picture. Obviously, we did the drawing last week, and it, it, it would turn out, obviously, because we're just using grey. It, it could look like an evening scene, but actually it is quite daylight. You can see that the light is shining through the feathers on the wing. Five more minutes and then I'll start. Unless you let me know you've drawn. Or traced, it doesn't matter. I won't tell you off. Beautiful bird. Very long legs. <laughs> Sweet. 
I think I finished a commission today, so that's a that's a good job done. And I don't know why I was putting it off and putting it off, and I I, I had to really kick myself up the bottom today and, and make myself do something. I think like everybody, I've been feeling a little bit flat, and and I'm I'm putting things off that I don't need to put off because I'm at home, so I can do it. Um, but I'm still not doing them. So this commission, I thought, no, I really need to get it done. It is an urgent commission. I was supposed to do it on Sunday, but I was teaching in the morning, and then I didn't feel like it in the afternoon because I'd already done some painting. Um, but I did it. I've got to send it to the person that's all did it, send a photograph just to check that it's okay, it's what they want, or do they need to tweak it, and then I can pop it in the mount and then pop it in the post. So that's good. I've got one more to get done, but there's no rush for that one, really. But I'll probably try and get it done before the weekend, if I can. Because I want to try and have an, a weekend off, an actual weekend off. This will be the first time in a year. Do, 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 two more minutes and then I'm painting. It's a good background actually today because you haven't got to actually have anything blending. It's kind of a splodgy blah, background. There's your technical term, a splodgy blah. Don't ask me to spell it. And of course, if you are new, um, you will be able to, you don't have to paint along now. You can watch the video now and listen um, and comment if you know how or if you, if you want. And then you can watch the video back again tomorrow it will stay in the groups it will be under the topic of live lesson um, it's already under that topic now and uh, so you head to this group go to live lesson you will see this first and then you can actually do the lesson at a time to suit you you don't have to do it live with me um, if you don't work well under pressure because we do work in two hours it will be a as near to a completed picture as I can make it. Um, so if you feel a bit panicky, do not worry. All is not lost. You can just down tools and uh, watch and listen and then do it again at your leisure. I have There's several ways I have students working with me. Um, here, they either, well here, online here. I can't fit them all in my dining room. Um, you can either join in live you can watch now, paint later. You don't have to watch live, you can just join in later. Um, we have several people from all over the world joining in and they do it during their time zone because some of them are either at work now because it's early morning or it's late in the evening. So it works quite nicely. Right, so it's quarter past. I am going to be um, doing my doing. I'll probably be using now. It's a tricky one. Um, I I will be on Discord in in a second. Yes, Sandra. It's because I I can't see comments on my screen. Um, so I'm having to dip in and dip out of everything at the moment. Um, bum, 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 bum. Let's get you on Discord so you can talk to me. There, I think I'm on. Hello. 
<laughs> That's all right. How are you doing? All right, thank you. Is it just is it just me and you tonight? Wonderful. So, yes, I've got a little half inch flat brush I'm going to use. Now, I know it's a big space to fill, but if we use a, if we use a brush that's too big, we're going to go over what we've drawn in our bird and we're going to need that and we're going to be annoyed at our past selves. Um, so I'm going to just wet my brush to make it workable and we're going to try and do a, a sort of mottled uh, color this is sort of purples and greens isn't it when you look at it let's let's have a slightly closer look at the reference yeah it's like purpley grays and greens to give us that that mottled background it's not sky um it's just foliage and uh which works really nicely so we'll do the purpley color first i've been doing a lot of purples lately uh so i'm going to go with ultramarine pull some of that out a bit of cadmium red Pull some of that out. Now you can never really tell when you mix a purple in acrylics what colour it is. I've gone for an aubergine. And let's shove some white. Now if we don't mix it thoroughly it works even better. And then I'm just going to, you can probably hear, I don't know if the microphone is picking up, I'm giving a good twist around. Ah, uh, thank you. I know you've been doing a lot of owls, haven't you, Louise? You you did that. You posted that lovely picture last week that you'd been working on. Was it coloured pencil? I'm very impressed with all the work you do and those that you that that post uh, what you've done in the lessons as well. Really, really lovely. Oh, that nearly went in my tea. That's not good. Oh, dear. Honestly. I might add a bit more white in here. So, all I've got, the flat brush. Uh, I'm using a flat brush and not a round brush because that might be a question that somebody wants to know um, because it gives me um, a better shape, believe it or not. If I was using a round brush, which has got a pointy end, it would start to um, give me lots of V shapes, whereas a flat brush gives me really random shapes, which is what we're after today. And you can hear how scratchy I'm going as well. I should be leaving the space where the green bits are, but it doesn't really matter because it's acrylics. We can paint over it. That's what I love about acrylics. Just shove it on. I am having to be a little bit careful around the bird just cause maybe I should be using a little brush but I'm I'm not going to I know how terrible is that yeah violet purple will be all right because you can drop in um other bits of blue and other bits of red you can make some sections bluer, some sections darker, some sections lighter. Um, so you can see I've mixed up an extra bit of colour here. And um, I'm just rocking and rolling with it. If your paint's dry underneath, don't matter. Um, I am expecting a delivery tonight. Um, I've been waiting for it all day. Um, and I think you have until 8 o'clock, so who knows. So if my door knocker goes, I will have to nip out it's not very far away is any in the next room so you can see how i'm blending it into the dry area is i'm just stabbing you don't want your brush too runny you want enough moisture on your brush so it, the paint doesn't feel sticky that is all I do, you know, I, I use canvas paper nearly all the time 
now. I used to use watercolour paper or anything I could get my hands on. And um, I found that the canvas paper actually lets the paint dry slightly slower. So you get a little bit more working time. Um, now I've got some students that have been painting in acrylics for a long time and they disagree with me. They, they feel that um, acrylic paper is better and I have other students that like to work in watercolour paper so it's very much a personal choice. Unfortunately though that does mean it's also an expensive choice because you've got to try them all out. Oh, did you find your nib, Sandra? Yeah. Oh, we didn't put it in. I will double check. So if you message the shop tonight after class and just say that and then um, I'll, I'll have a record because I'll I may I may forget and I don't want to forget I'm su surprised I just remembered now to be honest so um so if rolling and twisting doesn't work jabbing and stabbing might so doesn't matter at all if you haven't mixed up the right amount of colour. In fact, it's probably better if you don't. Because I've got blue bits in here, I've got red bits, I'm going to have some white bits and pinky bits. I don't want too much red because I don't want it to look like the owl's already gone in, swoop for the kill, and there's bits of blood gone everywhere. Because that'd be a little bit gory. We don't want that. Well, yes, if you want to paint a massacre, you go for it. You could put a little mouse or something in the bottom corner. Looking very scared. So all you need to do is just the tip. Of, if, if you need a bit of moisture, just the tip of your bristles. And even that could be too much. You just need enough moisture to help the paint flow and to stop the stickiness. And because this is sort of backgroundy stuff, we're going to be building up lots of layers. The, the only downside I get with the canvas paper is you think you've filled an area and then it dries and then you get lots of little white bits that is the, the gaps in the canvas that you think, because it's because the paint's wet and reflective, you don't necessarily realise that you haven't painted it. Oh, I nearly went in my tea again. I don't normally have my tea on the same side. That's going to be my excuse. But clearly I'm not going to try to um, clean my brush in my tea. Although I'm using non-toxic paint tonight, so uh, I should be safe, should I? Uh, should my brush accidentally uh, find its way in there? So I'm going, I'm adding more white, especially around the bit where the green bits are going to go. Um, just because it will help the colours sort of blend. I'm even putting it over some of the green areas that I haven't put in yet. So don't worry, I'm not, I haven't added any green before anybody panics. Oh, I haven't added any green, that's fine. Keep it mottled. So it's, we're not aiming for clouds or anything. This is what's really cool about this, because this isn't a sky. Um, and it, the green stuff that we'll add randomly in this will work. So it, it almost um, becomes a, a bit of a glaze, the green stuff will. Um, let's mix a bit more white in this so I can come over. Oh, I need a bit more white in that. Do you have pancakes today, Sandra? Oh, I ended up having a massive strop over mine because I just didn't, didn't work. And then I remember I have a massive strop every year. 
and say I'm not doing it again. I am not making pancakes. It's a stupid thing. And then I seem to forget that every year. But I had particular problems this year. And I think it's because I was using gluten-free flour. And oat milk. That's my excuse. Yeah, it, it just wouldn't cook properly. So um, eventually, after after seeking help, I managed to get five. Um, but uh, I think I, I, I had enough batter to feed an army to start with. So never mind. Right, so I've got that purpley stuff all over the place. A nice mottled purple. I do like purple. Cadmium red and ultramarine give a nice mid-tone purple. Because ultramarine is purple based, but cadmium red is orange based. So because one is not purple based, you get a mid tone. Gosh, my tea's gone cold already. Never mind. So you can stab, you can twist, and you can roll. There is no right or wrong. And if you want soft and subtle and pastel, go for it. If you want all things bright and gaudy, go for it. I, I, you know, acrylics are so hard to do soft pastels. I had a, a wonderful student called Judith. Oh, gosh. How far, how long am I going back? 20 odd years now. Nearly 25 years. Obviously, I taught her when I was three. And... Um, she, I called her the pastel queen because in the acrylic classes that she came to, she did the most stunning pastel colours. And we were all in awe. And we said, well, how, how have you managed to do that? She said, I don't know. I just, man I just do it. But then in watercolour classes, she'd make the most vibrant, punchy things going. And I go, well, how are you doing that? Because you, you're working opposite to how most people work with these. And she just used to go, I have no idea. I don't even like doing it like this. I don't know how to do it any other way. And no matter how much we tried to show her, she... Nope. Pastel queen for acrylics. Right, I'm going to let that dry. I might get the hairdryer on that. But we've got loads of time. He says at half past eight. Thank you, clock for bonging. You see, what will happen with acrylics, for the benefit of anybody that might be a bit new with it, is that you have a finite amount of time to work with them. When they're wet, you can blend and do all sorts. When they're nearly dry, you end up lifting off the colour, uh, revealing your paper or your surface colour. So you've either got a do it all hell for leather while it's wet or do as much as you can and as it starts to dry, leave it. Then come back when it's dry or have a hairdryer if you're impatient. So there are, there's an area here around his feet that is still wet. I must have had a little bit too much water on there and there's a patch up here. So if I go in even with the same colours and go on, the brush is going to have more moisture on it because of the paint and that moisture will actually lift it won't rehydrate acrylics because acrylics turn into plastic when they're dry so it won't rehydrate it in fact it will just lift it up it will become a magnet so if if you're finding that you've got as you're swirling or stabbing you're lifting off the color rather than putting color on it just means that your under color is drying um so stop get a hairdryer on it or waft it around and then um, and then you should be all right to go back on top again with um, with more color when it's dry so that's that's the tricky bit although it's exactly the same with watercolors if if you um, if you work with watercolors in the same way that you can blend and do all sorts of exciting things while it's wet 
um, and you can do all sorts of exciting things when it's dry. The in-between stage is where um, accidents happen and um, swearing occurs. I mean, you can you can swear all you like if you're on home at Facebook because I can't hear you. But I can't. You, I'm sure you don't swear, son. I'm sure you don't swear. I, I, I do in the car and at home. Um, I, I found it very difficult when I used to work in primary education. You can't swear at all, obviously. So you really get good at filtering your language, and you very rarely swear ever. Uh, but I've been out of the classroom now for uh, the the kiddie classroom for a long time. Um, and I try not to swear at any of you lot either, to be fair. Um, but it is weird how you, you lose that filter. If I went into the classroom now, I think I'd be really... Um, I'd struggle to not lose my temper. Or I'd struggle to have the same level of patience or the same level of uh, lower profanity. Um and just stick to crumbs and ups and blimey um and sugar and deer um so yeah it's interesting i'm just going to quickly blast the hairdryer on this so it'll just be slightly noisy for a sec um because it's not going oh, I mean, you could pretend that this is Sky. Nobody's going to know, are they? So if you want it as Sky, do it as Sky. Don't matter. Right. Trying to do everything in two hours is sometimes a, a, a good challenge. I have to do it in that time. You don't have to, you see. You have the huge advantage at home because you can watch the video if you get a bit behind. And then um, as soon as I finish... You can uh, at nine o'clock. You can nine-ish. You can um, watch the video back and and pick up where you've left off. I can't do that. So I'm the one confined by time, not you. Right, same brush. Slightly damp because I have cleaned it. I've stabbed it in the bottom of my jar um, to agitate the bristles. Uh, and I want green. Now, because I've got bits of purple and stuff over it, that would be really useful for changing the tone. So I've got ultramarine and the lemon yellow. It makes quite a vibrant green. Not wonderfully natural, but if we shove a little bit of white in there, maybe a little bit more yellow. Okay. Interesting. And I'm just going to sort of rock and roll along the base. And I'm going to drop in varying tones in here as well. So I might make uh, some a little bit more yellow. Let it, let it be patchy. Let it blend in a little bit. Ooh, maybe there's a bit of green up here. Uh, as your paint runs out of your brush, that's the exciting moment that you can sort of uh, drag it over another section. And it will hit and miss and, and, and give a really interesting bit of texture. Because you, you're sort of glazing. Now, now that's dry, you see. I can sort of, or scumble in the decorator's world. You've got scumbles and glazes and... Basically, anything that you do that's got a transparency to it over the top of another colour is what we're aiming for in some parts. So you can go with a bit more yellow if you want. You can go with more white. You can go with more blue. Just make it a, a nice um, a nice picture of a, a background of nothing. So that's what we're after, a background of nothing. Uh, twist, see if you notice I'm rolling between my finger and thumb is uh, is the way I do it. But that's not the the be all and end all. You can you can you can scrub and you can stab as we've as we've found out. So 
just play about with it and, and see how you get on. So add one bit of colour, shove another bit on your brush and add another tone to it, either a bit more white or a bit more yellow or a bit more blue. Make it your own. As I say, nobody's really going to pull you up on it because nobody's going to know what the original's like. But the more green you put on, the less sky it will look. And I might use some purple within the green once the green's on. So if oh, I'll just paint it over my desk, let's, let's rub that off because it is an antique. Although, who's going to tell me off? No one's going to tell me off because it's my own. Future Barry. Future Barry will tell me off. I do this all the time. I'm, I, I'm forever living for Future Barry. Um because I, I used to do or not do things and get really annoyed with myself for not doing things so I used to think ba past Barry past Barry is, is, is a really annoying person and I wish he'd be considerate for me because I've got to go to work and then I come back to work and things haven't been done so now I'll do I'll do things for future Barry like make the bed or uh, when I wash the bedding, I will do it straight away as soon as it's dry or, or put the new sheets on. Um, so future Barry doesn't come to bed and have to make the bed. It's a really nice way to think, actually, because you become considerate to yourself rather than um, just do what you want when you want. I'm just adding a bit more purple on my brush while I've got it green. And I'm twisting a little bit in and in and out there, and you get a lovely, a lovely tone. It's neither. N yeah, I've I've got a little bit, but you can always go in with a bit more blue and a bit more red without cleaning your brush. And you get beautiful tones. You really do, because it's neither grey, it's neither brown, it's not green. Who? What is it? We don't know. Do we mind? Not really. And this is supposed to give us that idea of out of focus foliage. That is what we're aiming for. Um, you may not have realised, I don't know. Uh, but that is the aim. So if you want more purple than you do green, just readdress the balance. But um, I, I do enjoy this sort of purpley, mucky, grey mixture that I'm adding on. So I'm going to add some more. So as long as we're done by, oh, I don't know, quarter to. Or no, actually, we can, we can spend a bit more time on this because um, that will give us an hour then to do the owl. So really take your time, have a fiddle, make some more purple up if you need it, make some slightly dilute versions of the colour so you can sort of swoop in and be like the owl, a bit darker there. Let your brush run out of paint. For something like this, it works really well if you can do that. That running out of paint means you can transfer colour somewhere else and it'll just be nice and soft. Maybe I'd, it's, it's, um, I'd probably go with a bit more blue in that. Some nice bits of red, but little bits of blue and white in there would look lovely. But your owl's really going to stand out. That's going to that's going to be gorgeous. I almost covered all of my purple green now. I'm getting a bit slap happy. 
not been a just adder I'm just tweaking the colors um, and I don't know if I prefer the green to the blue but I can always put some more purple back on let's make a little bit more purple up some lighter tones That's what this is what I love about acrylics is is that you can you know you can keep going until it's three or four inches thick just keep adding keep changing make it lighter make it darker make it greeny make it purpley it really is your world and I'm I've just looked at my picture on on screen and it does look a lot more vibrant than it is in real life um, so if you're trying to copy me um, the camera seems to have picked up the lemon and run with it uh, whereas for me it's a lot softer but I can show you how to to dull the colors down if you so wish but it is not as vibrant as that blimey I've just seen it on the camera again eek maybe I'll I, maybe what I'll do is if I do a purple glaze so all I'm doing to create a glaze is adding loads of water and if I roll this purple glaze over the greens it will dull it down and unify everything so really runny purple over the green subdues it all and stops the umphiness of it if you want it umphy, that's fine. That's your technical term today. Umphy. Oh, Baradagil Shidaki. Yeah. She just come for a quick look, I bet, to see uh, to see what we're up to. I think Jill will be attempting acrylics soon. I've got a funny feeling. But it's good to get to grips with one medium well before you move on to another one. Because it's a bit scary to try and learn lots of different mediums all in one go. Just because there's a lot to learn and they all react in different ways. I couldn't be doing this in watercolour in this way it wouldn't it wouldn't do it oh that's worked out quite nicely can you see how um yes oh no I won't oh maybe maybe you will Jill maybe you will um but give it time I'll see if I can work on you Get some shop sales in acrylic paints. Now that has muted it a lot. On the screen, it still hasn't, but I can't I can't mute it anymore. Otherwise there'd be nothing left. Let me get the hairdryer on it, just see if that makes a difference. Nice. I like that. Nice bit of blending in the sky with the green as well. Yeah, 
Yeah, definitely. That's nice, that thunder. Good blending. Oh, it's got an eerie evening glow to it, though, that has. So that's nice. Um, so keep building up, but do stop every now and again. Um, otherwise, you, you know, it does change slightly as it dries so if you if you want it more of a different tone it, it, acrylics are a bit like emulsion paint that they go a bit uh, and gouache really they go flatter and darker as they dry So the aim is that our background is out of focus, the owl and some of the twiggy things um, that's almost like dry cow parsley, I, I forgot what the real name is of that stuff, um, will be in detail. But do not rush. Um, you know, even take until 8 o'clock to get that bit done. I won't be using that big brush again. I'll be using um, fiddly bits. But it's up to you when we get to do the owl how much detail you choose to put on how fiddly you want to be and well also it depends on your brushes if you've got very 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 fine brushes it will work well um you see if you've got um, a white gel pen you can use a white and you know uh, liner pens and gel pens work well on top of dried acrylic paint not not damp acrylic paint, dry acrylic paint so if you wanted to um go around the wings for example after you finish painting to neaten it up, use use a gel pen afterwards. Ah, uh, see you soon, uh, Jill. Nosta, nosta cariad. Uh, and that's what you can, to be fair, you can do that in watercolours, but you do have to be a bit quicker um, because with watercolours, you end up lifting off colour. With acrylics, if you let a colour dry first, there's no, it won't lift, it will stay put. So that's good. What I might do, just for the time factor, as I say, it's me that's under time pressure, not you. Is I may put in a couple of the, the twiggy bits now using a thin brush. A long thin brush, a rigger or a liner brush or something like that. Um, and I'm going to go with a bit of yellow ochre. A little bit of white. And I think a tiny bit of black. Literally a pinhead of black. You don't You don't want too much. And you want the paint to be fluid enough. But I don't want it to stand out. That I want the owl to stand out. That's that's the, the biggie there. Mr Mr. Owl or Mrs. Owl. I've not asked. So you want your paint to be fairly fluid. And then you roll your brush around in it and that gives you your point back. And then you can really start to um, create branchy, twiggy things. This is also a really good way to cover up anything that's gone wrong. So if you've got something that really hasn't worked, don't tell anyone. Just stick a twig or something in front of it. Um, I'd go uh, a little, a little bit more black. You want it sort of like a brownie.
grey colour really, but not too brown. Um, oh, that went green. I think I picked up some green there. Vary the heights of the twigs and things. Make it interesting. But he's not quite on ground level yet. He's nearly at ground. Um, give it, but we want these to look like plants, not trees. Um, that's that's the crucial part. You can add a bit more white if you want to bring it out a little. And the reason why I'm putting yellow ochre into this section is to balance it out because the owl is going to have yellow ochre in it. And um, you, you want colour harmony. What would happen if we didn't put any of that in? Nothing, nothing major. The art police won't come and tell you off, but... What will happen is, is it just that the, the owl will jar slightly because he'll be made largely of, of colours that aren't present anywhere else in the picture, like the burnt sienna and the yellow ochre, um, which, you know, is, is no major thing, as I say, but it would be better if if you can put a bit in. So we'll have a bit of black, we'll have a bit of yellow ochre, and you can do some little dotty tops over some of this cow parsley. If I was being really free and liberal, I would um, spatter some of it, but I, I really don't want to cover my laptop. I've still got gouache on from when I spattered that not so long ago. I do love a bit of spattering, but you know, got to be careful with it. If you wanted to stick a little mouse, you'd do that right at the bottom. Or just a tail. Um, I've got a, a really funny student, well, he's not a humorous student, uh, Norman, on the drawing and watercolour classes, and he always paints his dog, Betsy Boo the Cockapoo, in, in the artwork. So I don't know what on earth he'd do if we did this one. Um, hopefully the dog would be chasing the owl, not, not vice versa. So this is just lots of little dots on the top of the branches. You can add more branches afterwards if you need to. But it makes it feel more um, twig-like than trees. We don't want trees. And again, you could add lights and darks. So this is yellow ochre, black and white, varying consistency. Now I'm not doing too much in that middle and it will look a little bit obvious if I don't do something. I might add a little bit more white. Let's have a few paler bits. And if, again, if you struggle, you could do this with white gel pen. But you have to, we have to get over the self-critiques of, you know, we almost think the same as tracing. In, in, in the drawing classes, I don't allow tracing. In painting classes, I do. Um, because you're, you want to learn the drawing and I'd hate you to spend all of the lesson getting frustrated on drawing it and then you miss the lesson on how to paint it so trace yeah, I, I, we almost think oh gosh it's illegal we can't do that no Canaletto traced all of his Venetian landscapes Vermeer traced a girl with the pearl earring um, Caravaggio Michelangelo um, Da Vinci they all traced everything it's fine. In the Renaissance, everyone was encouraged to trace. It was the best way you could learn. And it wasn't cheating. And it wasn't seen that um, the artists could actually, th th that they could do it for real. 
they knew how to do it but just like today if somebody's commissioning you and they're only giving you a week to do it their their only concern is the finished result what what it actually looks like they don't care how you get there things haven't changed in centuries I know, disgusting. It's only in recent modern times that tracing has been viewed as um, as as inherently bad. Um, I know, I and, and I I can understand why art teachers would say tracing is cheating because it means that you're skipping the step of learning how to do it. But if if they taught drawing properly then you wouldn't want to. So I've got students that will come to the drawing classes to learn how to draw and it enhances their watercolour or acrylics because they have more confidence, like we do on a Tuesday class. You know, last week we were learning how to draw it, this picture. So we looked at proportions, we looked at light, we looked at tone, um, we looked at all that kind of thing. Um, so it wouldn't have been as tricky to... Um, I've added a bit more black. It would have uh, it wouldn't have been as tricky to um, to draw this this week. Um, so it's very much old school way of working. Oh, you're right. Tracing is an art in itself. And I, and I, you know, when I used to teach kids classes, um, I gosh, a long time ago, a lifetime ago, um, I would give them all the same printed outline on a card and then teach them how to paint. Um, now, that whole class of kids and subsequent classes over the years all had the same outline. And I can tell you, every single painting was totally different. Totally different. So, you know, tracing is not the be-all and end-all. Um, and if it helps you get a little bit ahead and stops you from feeling anxious, then I'm all for it. I'm going to see what that looks like once the owl's in. I'm going to stop for now and then I'm going to make myself a drink um, and then come back in five uh, to see and paint the owl. You see, if the owl looks too white, I might use a white gel pen to do a few more twigs or something on there to bring it out a little. I don't know yet. It's hard to, it's hard to call with a painting until it's... Um, until it's finished and then you can balance it out a little bit more so um i'm going to stop for five um and i'll make a drink and i'll see you all in a minute
I'm back. Now that's dried, I can really see how dull those are. I'm going to show you the gel pen. So this is the, the white gel pen, the Uniball Signo, or Signo Broad. Um, and it works well on watercolours. We use it a lot for watercolours. It is our saviour, and it saves a lot of masking fluid and all of that. But it also works for pen work, obviously, and, and acrylics. But it has to be dry. I was just keeping my eye on it while I was uh, making a drink, and I, I was watching these colours just settle and darken. And I thought, hmm... I think I need again I'm not I'm not even being too careful about where I'm putting it because they it could be highlights on the colors that are already there or it could be brand new branches um, it is light fast um, and it is pigmented ink so it should be um, should be fine you do have to be careful with certain uh, elements of it. It, it if you used a brush on varnish for example it, it could run but a spray varnish is fine I say that because I've had instances where it has run but then other times it hasn't right let, let's let that dry for a sec and then we can look at our owl <clears throat> Hard to believe that over an hour has gone of our class today already. My word. And um, next, the next two weeks, I'll just let you know the next two weeks, um, we are doing, it's sort of building-ish. It's um, Chester city walls, you know, the old Roman walls of Chester, in the snow. So it will be a really interesting one to see the difference um, between the draw. Oh, I can show you the drawing that we did last week. For those of you that weren't in the class last week, I can show you our little owl. Before we crack on. So that was the drawing that we did based on the same reference image. Um, but it's all done step by step. We measured how far the owl was down across. We use I use a lot of fingers and hand measurements um, in drawing class to give you an idea of how to, to plan out the picture. Um, so that's the drawing of it, and this is the painting of it. So I, I, love th I really do love these evening classes, um, and I was at a point last year, because they're, they're one of our least attended classes, and um, I was at a point whether I should um, cancel them or not. Because uh, sometimes it can make it a very long day for me. Um, it's like 12 to 14 hour a day. But I enjoy it doing it so much because I love having the drawing one week and the painting next. That I'm keeping them going and they're, and they're gradually getting more popular which is good. I'm going to stick with my liner brush just because I, I like... I like to work with it. Going with my yellow ochre and a little bit of white. And I'm going to start mapping out where the ochre colours on our owl are. If you wanted to, I've, obviously there's ochre and white there. If you wanted to make it slightly more orange, you could add a tiny bit of cadmium red in there. Cadmium red, however, is what I call a hungry color so it tends to eat everything up the other reason why i like using this brush for this picture is that uh, the brush width makes a good feather shape if i need to Yeah, it is. Well, yeah, not for me. I'm a ginger, so it's not my skin tone. But yeah, a, a, a non-ginger person's skin tone. Yeah, sort of an orangey pink, I suppose it is. 
you could just use neat yellow ochre and a bit of white if you wanted to it really is yes ah oh, yes so you could add a tiny bit of red or you could add a tiny bit of brown if you wanted to um let's make it a little bit runnier for me so i'm doing it in sort of dabs and dots again i do like dabs and dots i find it useful and i'm gonna while i've got that color i can see that the uh wing feathers are almost outlined in this it's all fine you know what's great about acrylics is that um, if it doesn't work just let it dry and blob another color over the top you can put your white back on and no one's no one's really going to know it's it, it's fine same color but more water well it's um it's really wet and reflective so that might be why it looks a different color Very dilute. You you want to help it sort of flow a little bit. In fact, you know what I can do? I can zoom in now on just the owl. I keep forgetting I can do this with my camera. And be very flexible and arty, like a proper art teacher. digital one and as you go if you want to make areas lighter just add a bit of white to it because um, he's not a pure white owl really it's only as the the whites um, reflecting through the light that it, it feels white white because they're all camouflaged and all that jazz so if the if the paint wet it will help um things blend a little more but you know in the grand scheme of life don't be hard on yourselves we're in the middle of a pandemic and we're here painting an owl in the sky you know there's we're doing all right I might add more white to it, but at the moment, hmm, maybe some darks to add as well. You can see the sort of um, stripey bits under his tail there. so it is heightening the colors slightly more than it, it is in, again it's making it rather orange um, which mine isn't you, that's why we have the reference photo as well to help us get more accurate tone
white. Uh, There's very little white on the actual owl itself, um, which is why I said, you know, if, if you struggle with... I'm just trying to dilute some white to go over some of the bits that I've actually um, painted over. It's mainly the tips of his wings. But what you can do with it is sort of do the tips and then put a very white wash over the rest of the painting. Because basically what you need to do is you, you want to seal your paper. Because acrylics are wonderful, but what will happen... If you leave any areas of your paper, whatever surface you use, if you use it if you and you leave it paper coloured, um, when, let's just say you're really happy with it um, and you want to keep it, when the paint ages, the background will age, the, the, the natural paper colour rather, will age a different colour than the painting so what you want to do is just make sure that anything white is white colored and that's where the gel pen will come in handy uh, to go around certain certain areas the wings slightly grey and the face is slightly grey I suppose I suppose we'll say grey um, and if I'm feeling a bit naughty I will probably use black and white um, because there is grey flecks on his back so let me just bring my palette in um, if I mix some grey from black and white never mix it thoroughly you're in control here. So leave um, some bits a lighter grey and some bits a darker grey. And what will happen is you'll get a nice mottle or a marble. And that's perfect for what we want with Mr Owl. Because you might have some darker bits in there as well. Even better. I'm ignoring his face for a bit. Now this is very reflective. I'm going to quickly get the hairdryer on this because uh, the white bits that I put on are blinding back. This sort of grey colour will help mark out help mark out the the wing patterns. Lemon and black make a nice um, olive greeny grey, don't they? No, we want black and white where where possible. Again, you want you paint quite fluid. But for the shadows, you see, I'm going to make a, a purple grey. Because I think it needs something a little bit more. Uh, and something that will um, 
not look like grey feathers for this whole section down here. So um, we'll put this on. How many have we got? We've got three layers here, haven't we? It is all about observation when you're painting. And a lot of the time, I occasionally break the, I, I occasionally break this rule, but a lot of the time it's drawing or painting what you see, not what you know. Because that's where it starts to look a little bit more realistic. If you know, because you maybe you've got a barn owl, you know exactly where what everything is, Yet in this picture, you can't quite see it or um, know what it is. It will distort how um, we, the viewer, see the owl. So these, this is just varying shades of black and white. There's absolutely nothing else on my brush. But you can see my brush has got several versions of that colour on the go at the same time. And it's fluid. No, not yet. Dots. So you might find using um, a white gel pen or a black liner pen. Uh, gives more shape to the bird and it is very much dependent on your background if your background is very pale you might find going um, darker around the wings will help if your background is very dark you might find that going around the wing lighter but you don't want to outline it as such but you do need to give a little bit more definition in places and I think that will that will help immensely um, but there's loads to do we've got over half an hour so we're, we're doing well so don't panic I'm saying that for more for me than than you. See, what, what we're doing is we're, we're putting the colours on, um, but there's no shade. We're just putting the colours on, which is fine. And I'm going to do the same. I'm going to use this grey within his eye socket, I suppose, um, and stroke it out over his, no over, his, over his nose, over his beak, and maybe add more white to it as... Um, we progress while I've got the grey on there so I'll add more white I think that's a bit too runny though um, a 
and then I'll probably use the white gel pen right on the edge there. No, I haven't done the eye first today. Um, because it's basically just going to be black. I thought we'd get all the other little bits in. Because the eye isn't going to make all bright. Well, obviously he needs an eye. But uh, when when I do like portraits or close-ups of things, the eye is quite important to do first because it's it almost sets the scene. But with um, our little owl here, little hoot, I think... Um, I think we'll be okay. I don't want to go too dark, you see, with the dark. It's such a fine on his face. It's such a fine line between getting shade in and getting a grey face. And we, we don't want we don't want a grey face. Clean some of that grey off my brush a little and go in with a lighter grey under his tummy. Um, what round the mask thing? No, I'm going to do that in a very dark brown, I think, later on because it's um, it is more of a browny frill. I'm going to call it a frill. I can't remember. I used to know about things but my brain stopped working it's quite sad really I'm going to call it a, a pandemic brain because it's not it doesn't it doesn't remember anything now I, I can't retain any facts apart from really useless ones that I'm never going to need So I've added a little bit of black now for the eye. I'll put a white dot in it later. So remember that you can go as detailed or as... Um, vague as you wish with something like this um, it is tricky to to get the balance between what oh I've just ugh, I thought I'd clean my brush and sucked it and then I didn't clean it properly and I've just sucked it and I've just sucked paint nice okay don't do that Yes, make sure you, if you're going to suck your brush, make sure you've cleaned it. You see, the bit around his eye is more of a brown, a dark brown colour. So what I might do is I might introduce a little bit of burnt sienna with a bit of water. And uh, pop that in. Now that's quite... Dry the brush off a little bit because that's quite dilute. It'll be a bit on his beak as well. 
just make it. Just burnt sienna and water. And then if I add some of that burnt sienna, again, really small amounts, burnt sienna with a tiny bit of black or burnt umber on its own, very much dependent on what colour you've got. Then I can use that for little short lines to create that uh, frill around him. But I'm not painting it as a line, I'm painting it as lots of little lines. Lots of dots. Might add a few little brown dots on his back as well. that dry so at the moment his face is very grey but there are going to be I will use a white gel pen just to show you again how that will work or just use dilute white um, acrylic and that will work in exactly the same way but there's the sort of shading and all sorts of things um, to go on but I suppose while I've got this brownie grey colour could pop his leg in. And now I'll add some more black to it. And the reason why I'm going darker is because I need it to stand out from my background. Because I find it better to, I'll put some shady bits on, then I'll put um, the whites on. Because then, you, again, you can see about the balance. It's all about the balance, not the base.
Yeah. Oh, your owl's really nice, Sandra. Um, maybe under his belly a little bit, but I am going to do more shading in a sec. I'm going to give it a quick hairdryer blast uh, just to set the rest of the colour so I can do some glazing. No, I couldn't notice it, so that's, uh, that's good. in a little bit because I'm going to make a purple grey this time because I don't want it to look as I've said I don't want it to look like grey feathers so we're going to go with um, red and blue and a little bit of black um, to make a sort of oh that's too much oh, maybe it'll do loads of water because a glaze is a transparent wash don't need loads and loads of it but you can see on here <coughs> this is much much darker and we can put this on top because we've got color underneath so it will work really really well to give us a little bit of a shadow without changing the colour because it's and under his uh, under his belly because the important thing to remember is that if if we wanted to add a sort of shadow colour to this and um, we wanted to make it slightly you what sorry uh, red, blue and a tiny bit of black and loads and loads of water. Um, if we were to um, make a, gr a, 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 a purple or a grey that didn't quite get the colour that we wanted, we'd then add white to it. But the issue with adding white to it is it would no longer be um, the same tone. Uh, whereas here we can mix a bit of water and it gives us the perfect tone and we can make it lighter or we can make it darker and that really works so so well uh, it is it's a, it is sort of an aubergine yeah but really runny And because we're using purple, that helps integrate it into the rest of the picture. So we haven't got weird things going on. It all starts to gel. It's going to look a little bit odd on mine at the moment because it's reflective. Um, no, it's purple. It's exactly the same colour as the background, actually. It's just because it's reflecting the light because it's wet. But obviously, as a painting, there's much more to the painting than the owl, isn't there, in, in, in what we're doing uh, this evening? 
um, currently I'm just zoomed in on the owl so it's very easy to forget that there's more there's more to it even though it's just background stuff it's got a dark bit on the back of his tail I've just spotted um, let's paint that in with a bit of runny black um, so it's very easy to to forget everything that's We've, we've already painted to date with this background. Um, I've just added a little bit more black to it because I've, I've noticed that there's, there's more dark on the tail and I hadn't put any on. Which is very naughty of me. What I might start doing with just white on my brush um, is, is just start doing a few highlights, seeing if I can do it without the gel pen. But you do need to make the white quite fluid. But I could do a bit of both, I suppose. it's all about contrast you see to make white bits look whiter there has to be no white anywhere else and um, that's often what you'd call a rookie mistake is that we get a bit scared about what we're doing and uh, you end up with leaving lots of white bits about but in order to make white you can't go any lighter than the white that you've got either the white of your paper or the um, white of your paint. But in order for it to look white, everything else has to be slightly darker. Um, I will go around some of the wings as well. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying so hard to do it with just the brush, but I will probably end up using a bit of gel pen as well. Especially the uh, the ends of the feathers. I really want those to feel so nice and light. That 
sort of ethereal glow that he's got a little bit on his end of his tail feathers they can flick out a little see if I didn't have the gel pen all would not be lost because I'd just have to go um, and, and do a couple of extra layers on top. Let's see how that looks. Um, I'm starting to yeah i've done i've done the feathery the pointy bits but um there is light all the way around him because the light is above him but again it will depend like i said if you've got a very pale background then you'll be better off doing a slightly darker line um with a lighter background a darker background it works well to have the light so you know it, it very is dependent on um yes yeah yours would be nice yours will look quite nice with the light because you have got a darker background maybe i'll just give a little hint of line on his uh, leg dry for a minute and then think about uh, if I want to put the gel pen on where I'm going to put it and I think it'll be more around the the face and beak area it's just so easy just to keep fiddling though and that's sometimes a bonus or a curse. It's good practice in trying to get, I think the hardest thing in any medium, so it's not just acrylics, it's, it's in watercolours and oils too, the hardest thing is to get the paint runny enough and opaque enough. might find you can get it runny really well Letting that dry.
fill it with a little bit of gel pen. Let's go. Oh, 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 let's try. Um, I wouldn't do any more to it. If I zoom out, you can kind of see now the full. Let me move my plate out of the way. The full effects of the picture there. So you can see how he is. He is lighter. What what you can do, uh, and it is it is tricky. I won't pretend it isn't. If you really want him to come much more forward, you could do glazes over the um, background. You know, you could do some purpley black glazes over, you know, behind the owl. Um, but it, it really does depend on um, how much you want to add or take away from the image or how true to the reference you want it to get. Um, obviously I will be taking a photograph of this um, and posting it underneath the reference image that I um, that I added the colours to this afternoon um, just so you've got a bit more of an idea so you can use it as a reference any time you want. I've got too much white on his top of his head and I need a bit more ochre now. This is where you get into the realms of just addering and fiddling. Let's add a bit of yellow ochre to that white while it's damp. That'll work. Um, what what are you using to mix your plate? Uh, mix your uh, a plate plate. Um, if you want to clean it totally, boiling water. Boiling water lifts off the the um, the acrylic. Yeah, pour boiling water on it. If it's a ceramic plate, it, it should coat with boiling water. So yeah, boiling water will. Um, Oh yeah, you'll be fine then. You'll be fine. Yeah, I'd um, definitely boiling water. I don't think I want it. I think we put my name on it and that might stop me from fiddling. Probably won't. But um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I can't believe it's five to nine. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it today. Um, 
it's 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 quite a nice reference and as I say I'll take a photograph so you'll be able to see um, what it looks like maybe in comparison to um, the uh, the drawing that we did you know you can side by side them <coughs> and see and so if you felt brave enough um, it is a closed private group so whatever you post doesn't get posted anywhere else um, if you wanted to post where you're at or what you've done um, I do enjoy seeing them and uh, it, everybody's so encouraging in the group so it's it's well worth it um, even though it might feel a little bit scary it's well worth it uh, see I'm fiddling put it down stop it um, I'll just quickly run through all the classes this week that'll take us to next Tuesday Tomorrow afternoon is a portrait in pencil. Thursday morning, a rainy scene and puddles in acrylics. Thursday afternoon, a colourful layers of sunset of Rio de Janeiro in watercolour. Friday morning, art history on our Discord channel uh, where I'm discussing uh, Liechtenstein and Warhol. Friday afternoon is a sleeping fox in the snow in watercolour. Nothing on Saturday and Sunday. Monday evening is um, a Monday morning. Sorry, is uh, a deer in Richmond Park at sunset in watercolor. Monday evening is the colorful layers of sunset of Rio de Janeiro in watercolor. Tuesday evening, because there isn't a class in the afternoon. Tuesday evening, no, there is. There is a class next next Tuesday afternoon, because um, it will be um, the twenty third. No, not next week. No, yes, it will be the 23rd next week. It is the 23rd next week, which is Melin Linen uh, Windmill in Wales. And then next Tuesday evening is the um, Chester Walls in the Snow in Pencil. Wow, that's, got, that's another week gone. Wow. So thanks so much for your company. I've really enjoyed it tonight. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it too. If you've just been watching and you're going to paint later, um, I look forward to seeing what you do. Um, if I'm not going to see you again for a, a while, do be careful, stay safe, and uh, have a great time, whatever you get up to. Uh, but some I know I will see within the next week. So thank you very, very much, everyone. Um, take care. Thank you for your company. And I will see you all very soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.